Julia Tyler is a name that isn't mentioned much in history, but definitely has a place in the history books, she is known as one of the most scandalous first ladies in history. In fact people state she is the most controversial first lady of the 1800s, even beating out Mary Todd Lincoln. Julia Tyler was the second wife of John Tyler, the 10th President of the United States, she married the President near the end of his term after John's first wife, Letitia Christian, died in 1842 during John's early presidential term. At first, most people became excited about the new First Lady, that is until they got to know her a bit better. Julia Tyler lived in a world where women were oppressed, but she remains bold. It isn't a secret, during the 1800s, women were thought of as weak, they needed men to take care of them, at least according to society. Because most women grew up being told this, it wasn't hard for them to believe it throughout their lives. At least, most women continued to think that they needed a man, because they are the weaker gender. Some women such as Julia Tyler, laughed at people who told her such statements, she didn't think of herself or any other woman as weak. Instead Julia saw herself as fabulous and bold. Eventually, she did start to see herself as different from other women. Julia Tyler lived a life of privilege from birth. From the time of her birth, nearly everyone in New York knew Julia born Julia Gardner on one of the largest private islands in the United States, Gardner Island. Her father David Gardner, was a young politician aiming for a seat as a New York senator. During her childhood Julia proved to be different from how people expected her to act, because of her family's high status, she got away with more than most girls her age. Of course this only made her more bold and robust. Julia didn't agree to marry President Tyler right away. President John Tyler tried to ask for Julia's courtship a couple of months, before she agreed to start a relationship with the president, one reason for this is due to her interest in Tyler's son, who told Julie he would divorce his wife for her. The other reason is because of Tyler's age. Tyler spent much time giving Julia everything she wanted as she continued to spend time with various other men. In the end, the sudden death of Julia's father during the accidental peacemaker explosion on board the Princeton brought the couple together. Julia's older brother sued her to keep her away from their mother's inheritance. Julia's father died years before their mother, while she received some of her inheritance upon her father's death. Her mother's estate valued at $180,000 in 1865, nearly $3 million today. However, the relationships between her siblings became so strained, because of her support for slavery, that her brother refused to share the inheritance. Julia's brother, David Gardner, sued his sister so she could not touch most of their mother's estate. He cited that Julia was unfit to handle the estate because of her mental incapacity. David won the case in 1867, removing Julia from her mother's will. There was a large age gap between Julia and John Tyler. President John Tyler asked Julia to marry him, after his first wife died during this presidency, while it was normal for men to search for a new wife, especially if they had children after their wife died, many people felt that Julia wasn't the best fit for Tyler. One of the biggest reasons for this is because of their large age gap. When Tyler married Julia, he was 54 years old, and she was 24. In fact Julia's mother was 9 years younger than Tyler. Furthermore, Tyler's oldest daughter was 5 years older than her stepmother. Julia became a strong confederate. Even though Julia received a northern upbringing with a family who didn't support slavery, she supported the Confederacy after her marriage to President John Tyler, residing in Virginia after Tyler's presidency ended, she became a supporter of slavery. From the start of the Civil War, Julia supported the Confederate States, her husband passed away in 1862, and while she tried to stay at her home, the military forced her out. Therefore Julia moved herself and her children back to New York in the early 1860s. Julia adopted ladies-in-waiting during her time as First Lady. Julia quickly moved into the White House after her marriage to John Tyler. While many people thought she would struggle to become the First Lady, she put these rumors to rest fast. It didn't take long for Julia to start adopting First Lady traditions. 
not only did Julia do what people expected her to do, but she used her time in Europe as a way to adopt other duties as a first lady. One of the traditions she started was ladies-in-waiting. These ladies wore matching dresses and stood around her during parties and other social events. Julia treated herself like a queen and wanted other people to do the same. One reason Julia enjoyed her responsibilities as a first lady, is because she felt like royalty. Julia always wanted to become a royal, and this dream became more critical after she lived in Europe, for several years, and saw how the royal family lived. Julia often referred to herself as Queen Julia in front of visitors at the White House, she wore the most elaborate clothing, jewelry, and even headpieces that often reminded people of a crown. Also though she didn't spend a lot of time as First Lady, she always referred to that time as her auspicious reign. Julia was the first photographed First Lady. You have seen several pictures of the First Ladies, from George Washington's wife, Martha to the present First Lady. However most First Ladies during the 1700 and early 1800s were not photographed. They had their portrait painted. Julia Tyler became the first wife of a president to have her picture taken. While Julia posed for oil paintings as well, she knew she was beautiful and she wanted people to know this and wanted people to remember her for her looks and not just her reputation. She requested photographer Edward Anthony and dispersed her photograph. However people still wanted her portrait over a picture. Julia posed for a handbag ad. As a spirited young woman, Julia looked for various adventures. One of these adventures led her in hot water with New York society because she advertised a handbag. Most women saw this as a problem because she was a gardener and upper-class lady. As an upper-class lady, Julia shouldn't spend her time advertising for a lower social class. In fact, she shouldn't waste her time on advertisements at all. This is a job for another woman, one that doesn't have such high social standards. Julia's parents shipped her to Europe after the advertisement scandal. It is a true scandal in the 1800s New York society, an upper-class woman advertising handbags for the middle class, New York society scoffed at the advertisement, and Julia's parents, especially her New York senator father, couldn't believe his eyes as he saw the ad. Not only could Julia damage her reputation, but the status of her whole family, her parents wouldn't have this, and they didn't want their daughter dealing with the outburst of the ad. Therefore they sent Julia to Europe until everything boiled over. Many people didn't like Julia newfound power. The president is considered the most powerful man in the United States. People believe this more during the 1800s. While his wife wasn't as powerful, most people thought the first lady as the most powerful woman in America. This is one reason why people shivered at the thought of Julia as a first lady. Julia always had a lot of power as her family held enormous power in a high society, however, marrying the president gave her more power than she could ever imagine. Many people told the president that, he had made an enormous mistake giving Julia so much power. Julia Tyler became the first lady to receive a widow's pension. After the death of her husband in 1862 in the Civil War, Julia lost everything but her children temporarily living with her mother, she started to put her life back together. The first step Julia took was to reach financial freedom again. Not only did Julia get her two sons into federal jobs, but she managed to get Congress to agree to her widow's pension. From her husband's presidency, Julia became the first former first lady to receive a widow's pension and left the door open for future first ladies. People named polka dances after Julia. As a socialite, Julia spent much time at dances. She also hosted a lot of dances at the White House during her eight months as First Lady. Therefore, it never surprised anyone that people started naming polka dances after her. One of the biggest dances Julia became known for was dancing too close to men, whom she did not marry. While this did not become a popular dance, one person named a polka dance the Julia Waltzes. She became so elated about this dance, and she let everyone know they named it after her. Julia received the name The Rose of Long Island. When you read the title The Rose of Long Island, you won't think of this as scandalous. A rose is a beautiful flower that most women love. However, during Julia's lifetime, having a secret admirer call you this in the newspaper is anything but superb. It's unacceptable.
The Secret Admirer, no one knows who published his ode to Julia, while The Secret Admirer did not receive any scandal, Julia received many dirty looks, and had to deal with the gossip. A man calling out a woman in the newspaper is similar to posing nude on the internet today. Julia never worried about her reputation. From her early years, Julia held a reputation that most women did not want during the mid-1800s, this is more true for women who lived a luxurious lifestyle. Most women spent their time reading articles about how they should act, but not Julia. She acted how she wanted to act. While Julia wanted people to read good things about her in the newspaper, she hardly ever worried about how other people saw her around town. In fact, most of the time, Julia thought people talked badly about her, because they were jealous of her beauty. Julia's stepchildren couldn't stand her. After Julia married the president, many people started to see her in a different light. The upper-class women that once despised the way Julia acted began to believe she settled down, and started to treat her with more respect. However, not everyone felt this way. John Tyler's children couldn't stand their new mother. Tyler, who had told his children he wouldn't remarry, viewed the quick marriage as a slap in the face to their mother, while the two youngest daughters, Mary and Elizabeth, started to like their new stepmom. The oldest daughter, Letitia, never cared for her. Many historians feel Julia Tyler was narcissistic. One factor about Julia Tyler that people understand, when they get to know her is that she had a lot of self-confidence, however, much of her confidence was unrealistic. Julia didn't just think she was one of the most beautiful women in America, she knew this as a fact. She also stated this as a fact. Julia cared deeply about her looks, just like most high society women during the 1800s, but many historians believe that Julia's self-image became so unrealistic that, she showed signs of narcissistic personality disorder. Many people believe Julia was a flirt. Women needed to act reserved in 1800s America, they couldn't ask a man out, a man needed to court them. While a woman could flirt, it wasn't something that people taught them to do. Women of upper society shouldn't flirt as this was something that women in lower social classes did. But, Julia never let this her social class stop her from doing anything, including flirting, as a beautiful high-class woman, Julia loved the recognition she received from various men, and she had no problem returning the attention. Abolitionist Harriet Jacobs responded to Julia's support for slavery. Julia, who lived through the Civil War, defended slavery during the 1850s. When she wrote The Women of England vs. The Women of America, Julia wrote this title in response to the Stafford House Address, which petitioned against slavery. While many abolitionists became angry with Julia's work, the person who made her frustration well known was Harriet Jacobs. Born a slave, Jacobs understood slavery firsthand, and wrote an essay that she published in the New York Tribune in response to Julia's piece, 